we're now going to travel inside of our cylinder animation. So I want you to go layer, new camera. I want you to make sure the preset is set to 50 millimeter and we're not going to have enable depth of field just yet. We might go back and add that. Now that we have the camera set, make sure you have your camera tools. We're going to get the track Z camera tool and let's just drag on the screen I'm holding down shift so this goes a little bit faster and I want it to start right where it touches the document window okay so we're gonna start there and then I wanna set some keyframes for this so to make my life a little bit easier instead of trying to figure out what did I exactly change all I'm gonna do is with the camera one selected I'm gonna type UU and this is basically going to show me everything that's changed from my default so I just have to set up keyframes for those two properties, the position and the point of interest. I'm going to go to the end of the timeline and then just drag, holding down shift to make it go a little bit faster, and drag through till I get right about here. Okay. The great thing is I'm not really worried about what numbers I have to put in there and what I have to keyframe. So let's just drag that through. See it's doing what I want it to do. We're also going to take another RAM preview on this. So hit the tilde key, zero on the numeric keypad, and let's see what we end up with. So now our RAM preview is done, and you can see we get this really nice tunnel effect. We might add a little bit more detail to this, but we'll determine that going down the line on this. So let's stop this for a second, and what I want to do is actually render out at this point. So let's hit the tilde key, let's go composition, make movie, I'm going to hit the tilde key again so to increase the size. And let's just name this boxes2.mov. Under render settings, I want you to toggle open to current settings. Since we've already RAM previewed this, there's no need to render this again. We'll just render the RAM preview. That'll make it go a lot faster. Also, under our output module, make sure that we're importing this in so that we don't have to go and look for it. Let's click OK. Let's hit render. And you can see how quickly this goes because the RAM preview is already set in and let's minimize the render queue let's hit the tilde key and you'll see we have boxes2.mov just want you to drag that in to the composition icon so we have a new timeline and when I was saying we might want to add more detail how you would do that is take boxes2.mov and just duplicate it command D set it to an add mode and maybe change the rotation so if I change the rotation to 180 now I have a complete circle. We can just scrub on that to see what we get. If I want to see this full screen, I can just hit the tilde key. And now we're getting a lot more detail with a lot less work. Now if we're worried that our animation looks too symmetrical, you could of course move this in time to get an entirely different feel. So let's just go to the beginning. So let's grab the top layer and just nudge this down so we fill up this negative area right about there. Now, I'm not going to use 10 seconds for our final animation. Our final animation is actually only going to be 7 seconds. So let's click on 7 seconds, type the letter N to constrain our work area. So this is what we'll be previewing. And if you see any other negative areas that you want to fill in, you can duplicate this again, Command D. So let's try something a little bit different. So let's hit S for scale. I'm going to break the chain. And in my X scale, I'm just going to type in negative 100. There we go. And we're still going to offset this slightly. Let's fill in these negative areas here. See which looks good. Maybe go up a little bit more. Right about here. Let's just drag that. And I think that should work. So let's hit the tilde key and do a RAM preview to see what we have. Very nice. That's exactly what we're looking for. A very detailed tunnel going through. That's perfect.